there's actually two different things going on in this problem. One of them in part A is the maximum height reached. Where is the maximum height here? That, right? Okay, and how far away does it hit the ground? Where's that? There, right? So th we're not talking about, we're talking about kind of two sets of distances for the two different parts, A and B. So we could break it up any way we want. Even though this ball starts here and goes all the way to here, we can just stop it halfway. We can just say, let's just look at it until it gets to its maximum height place, because that's what we're interested in for part A. We want to know what's going on at that point. Um, so let's just start with A, and we'll start by listing our vertical and horizontal. Okay, so delta y, delta t, v naught, v a. And so if you're getting bored with doing this, um, all this writing of information, I want to say that when the questions get more challenging, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be something you can at least rely on to at least try to figure out what you know. Okay, so the question tells us that the velocity of the initial velocity is 20 meters per second and the angle is 37 degrees, right? So we want to know its maximum height reached. So let's, let's go through this. What do you want? What do we know? What do we don't know? Same idea, right? Yeah. Right, so 20 sine 37, 20 cosine 37. We can break up. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, it's basically, you can, it's basically from the right angle triangle formula. So I think that's, I think those you should kind of know. Um, so maybe not. Because this is not always true. The reason I don't, the, the reason I give you the five fundamental equations is because I would say they're generally always true when, in this class, when acceleration is constant, you can always use them. But some of the equations we get, they're kind of derived and they're not useful in certain <coughs> situations. Um, so you have to, so I don't always give those ones. Okay, what else do we know? And is this plus or minus? We didn't really specify. Um, I, for this one, I made the, I made the up negative. You wanted up, is that, how do people feel about that? I don't know. Maybe that makes more sense. If you're throwing something but I want you to stop thinking about negative and losing because that's I, I actually think okay I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna stick with this I'm gonna actually stick with this I do think you should be able to move fluidly between plus and minus um, up and down but for these projectile motion questions I do think I'm gonna stick to negative there okay so then we have negative 9.8 right in the vertical. Okay, anything else we know? For this in particular, mm -hmm. um, VY is zero. Okay, so why is VY zero? Max resistance. Because at that point, when it hits that point, right. it's going to be zero. This is because we're dealing with it at the maximum height. Oh, the and at the maximum height, what's it doing? What's, it, what's its velocity doing? It's doing this, right? Remember this page? Oh. Remember this page? It says at its maximum height, it's not traveling at zero, but its vertical component of its velocity is zero. It's horizontal. It's horizontal is still the same as it always was. Okay? But that's why this is zero. So that's why we're breaking it up into these different parts. And for A, it's specifically at its maximum, not max Hammond height, but maximum height. All right, and what do I want to know? <laughs> Well, let's see. The, you want, what do you want to know? You want to know this, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I would say, look, well, you have three pieces of information. This is your don't know, don't care, right? Mm -hmm. so, like, what, if you wanted time? Yeah. You, would, you would make delta y your don't know, don't care, and solve for t, right? All right, so for part a, continuing on with a, um, we have our delta t is our no, no, no care, so we have v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta y, and these are y's also. And then, this is zero, right? So we have, and what are we solving for? y 
delta y equals negative v naught y squared over 2a. Be careful with that negative sign. It's outside of the squared, isn't it? So they're actually going to cancel out your two negative signs. For this, I got, um, got 7.39. Okay. But on the sheet, yeah. it's 7.35, so I don't really know. Yeah, I don't know. If we're a little bit off... Yeah, it's usually right? okay. Did anyone else get 7.35? Okay. So you might have rounded. Did you round something? I probably did. Yeah, I would say don't round to, uh, in the intermediate steps and round at the end. I really keep two decimal. Yeah, and then so if if you're keeping two decimal like in your answer or three significant figures in your answer, you should use four or five in the intermediate steps. Oh, okay. okay. Should it not be negative? It should not be negative because you've got a negative here and you've got a negative here. And it wouldn't make sense for it to be negative because we called up positive, right? Mm -hmm. So if up is positive, this is definitely, this maximum height is definitely above where it started. So now let's look at B. And for part B, maybe I should erase this and do it over. For B, is B1 not zero? Correct, it's no longer zero because it's down here. Um, does anyone have any questions about A? I'm going to erase it. Okay, so I'm going to erase this. And what, what of this information still works? I'm going to say we don't want, this isn't our unknown. This is still the same, right? This is different. That's all the same. Would you agree with me on this? Yeah, but even though that's not our unknown anymore, mm -hmm. is our delta Y 7.35? It is. Okay, so no, no. no. So if you're taking the, okay, so now, now what's our unknown? It's how far away it is. It's this. So now for part B, so this is part B now. For part B, we want to know this, which is delta X, right? Now, how far it displaced is the football from its original height? Zero. Zero. It went all the way up here, but it came all the way back. So it's delta y is 0, OK? So now we have this situation where we want to know delta x, but we don't have these two. What do we do? We can find time. Yes. I don't know, don't care. Exactly. We don't know, don't care this. And we use this time. In. So now we have to deal with the vertical in order to solve the horizontal, right? So now solving. That for time, we get delta y equals v delta t plus one half a t squared. Similar, yeah. This is very similar to number two. What's 20 sine 37? Did anyone calculate that? Uh, 12. Uh, yeah, 12.04. You agree? Yeah. T minus 4.9 T squared. So in math, they never like you to just cancel out the T. Um, you can basically factor out that T. T and then 12.04 minus 4.9 T. So then T equals 0. T equals? 4 what? Okay, so what is the physical significance of these two times? Does it make sense to you? Yeah, it does, right? It starts off at the, at the ground, and it ends up at the ground. So the first time is the initial, and this is the final. So the reason that the last, in the last problem it was negative is because it started above. Yes, exactly. The, the, you started above, and then you landed down. So that negative time represented what it would have been if it started on the ground. Vivian? All right, so now that we know the time, we can easily plug it into here, 2.45. I don't know if there were more digits. You might want to use them. And then we would say delta x equals v delta t, v x delta t. 
What was this? Did someone solve for this? Uh, 15.97 to the 11. Okay. 15.97 times uh, 2.45. And so that's what? 39.2 meters. Okay. Good. Does that make sense? Questions about this one. So you see how we had to adjust what we wanted to put into our unknowns and our given, like to, uh, to suit the problem that's asking. So we had to be able to know that for the maximum <coughs> height, we were only considering it halfway. And then when we wanted to know when it hit the ground, we had to consider the whole arc. So would you suggest that like when there's problems like A, B, and C, like to like rewrite out the vertical? Sometimes, sometimes it works. Sometimes, like in the past, in the previous one, did we have an AB for that one? No. No, not always. It might say, it might say how, far, how far away did it hit the ground and what speed was it going when it hit the ground. In that case, all your information is, all you're given is the same. You don't have to change anything. But be aware that you might have to, I think, is the key thing here. And then how about the acceleration at its maximum height? How do we solve that one? It is. That's a, that's a question I'm going to try to trick you with every single time. Okay, the acceleration is the same all the way. When it, when it leaves your foot, when it just about lands on the ground all the way through, its velocity is constantly changing, but its acceleration, the amount it's changing by, is always the same. 9.8 meters per second squared down. Okay, so for... Let's say, like, we didn't get that was, like, a little trick question. Uh-huh. still find it. Um, let's see how, yeah, you probably could now that you know the time, but you needed it for this. But yeah, like, let's say you were like, okay, I'm going to pretend I didn't use it for this vertical part. Well, we found the maximum height. Yeah. At the maximum height, we used that acceleration. So like. Right. Yeah. So you kind of need to, yeah. But I mean, honestly, people will still get sort of tricked by this because it seems like it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, it should be zero, Right. right. And then the, that's what I'm trying to kind of tease out is, no, this acceleration is not velocity. It's vertical velocity is zero, but its acceleration is still changing. So it doesn't get there and stay there. It's not like the earth turned off when it gets there. The earth is still pulling it down, so now it's going to start bringing it back towards the earth. Okay? All right, four is a much, okay, we're going to like step it up a few notches for four. Um, and let's start it, and maybe you can, so four is, this is something I want to do more of with you, um, is that there's no numbers in number four. There's only, ex we're trying to derive an expression. When I got to my first year freshman physics class, they, I literally never took out my calculator again, because they never actually gave us numbers to use. It was kind of frustrating. But it's like basically everything we did was derive an expression for this, derive an expression for that. And then what you can do is plug in the numbers that you need and it can work out that way. Okay? But this is much more challenging and it involves a couple of tricks. So I want you to stay with me. Um, is this pen? I don't have any thin pens anymore. I don't know what happened to them all. Okay, so let's see. Do I have them in here? Oops, I'm still recording. Sorry, class. Sorry, those of you that are watching this at home. <laughs>